Hey guys, welcome back, and hey, it's finally out, or coming out, Salt and Sanctuary. For those of you that don't know what this is, this is for a the newest game from Ska Studios, the people that made Dishwasher Dead Samurai, I made a game of zombies in it, Time Viking and Space Raptor, uh, Charlie Murder, a few other games, a lot of little indie games from a tiny studio. They've been working on this for about three years now, I believe. And it caught a lot of people's attention because it's a 2D uh, hand animated game that uh, definitely seems to take some inspiration from Dark Souls. And every time someone says that, that it definitely catches some attention. But hey, I've played previous games from this developer and they're pretty high quality games. So I'm interested in seeing what their take on the formula is. And I've obviously got an inherent interest in Dark Souls after having done two playthroughs of Demon Souls and a playthrough of Dark Souls. and. Two playthroughs of Dark Souls 2 and Scholar of the First Sin and Bloodborne on this channel. <laughs> We've spent our fair amount of time attacking and waiting for a stamina meter to recharge. Let's get in there. Alright, welcome to the field, Toral. I don't know where these names come from in my head. Male hair is unkempt. Oh, wow. Fair number of options here. So yeah, it is a it is a, the specific style of 2D here. That's very unkempt. What's that? It's called Shag. All right, buns. You can give your character the buns. That's pretty funny. This actually, these might be gender agnostic hairstyle options. I'm not sure. They give you a decent number of options here. The Bella. The Fernworth. All right, straight. Unkempt is probably the one people a lot of a lot of people will use. I think I like the uh let's use this one a little bit. Change the hair color. Whoa. There are definitely hair color options here. Okay. <laughs> there we go. We'll we'll pretend to be uh you know, like Dante-ish here. <laughs> they call it whiskers instead of facial hair. That's a first one for me. I don't think I've seen that one before. They cram a surprising amount of facial hair onto a small face. I think, I think I'm okay with just clean. Whisker colors should be... Oh, I can't change the color from here. Alright. Just in case... I thought I'd change it in case it happens to ever grow whiskers in the future, but that may not be a, a thing that's gonna happen here. Black eyes, red eyes, yellow eyes... A lot of options here for a very small detail you probably won't pick out. Let's just go with black. Origin. Oh! Look at all these options. Oh, your origin locations on the map actually have a, a, an effect on your on your appearance. This place is called Gulchmire, and it seems to make you an undead of some kind. Tristan. Wow, okay. So you pick a location in the world that your character's from, and it totally changes how they look. Look at this, Jindran. It makes you look at some kind of, like, dark orc. That's a... This is a surprisingly original way of handling origins. All right, so our options here are Knight, Mage, Paladin. Whoa. Can I see all the... Oh, that's the cloak loading in that keeps dropping. Okay, I was wondering what the physics back there was. So Knight, Mage, Paladin. Can I scroll over to see what he's wearing right now? Paladin, and then can I... Nope. Challenge? No, I don't, I don't think I can scroll over to the actual weapons over there to see what they are. There's a thief. A chef? <laughs> okay. Cleric. Popper. And Hunter, with- seems to take a very specific influence from a Bloodborne for just a hint right there. Cleric is tempting. I have a tendency to play clerics when I'm brand new to these things, but Hunter looks pretty great too. Is that, is that a whip and a bow? Because you are appealing to certain Castlevania interests that I tend to have. Let's try Hunter. That seems like it could be fun. Effects. Red shards. Stone cell sword. Amber idol. Grasper ring. And crystal sphere. Seems to be like the item that comes with your character. The grasping ring. Let's do the grasping ring. At this point I don't necessarily know what it, what it is, but it'd be interesting to see how it plans out. Um, hardcore mode I assume means you die permanently. Magic only, iron pot only, ore only. Means, I assume means you can only use those certain weapons. No blocking, no healing. Naked. I assume it just means you don't have any clothes. Alright, so right off the bat, this game seems to be designed for challenge runs and special things, the way that people eventually do with Dark Souls after a few playthroughs. Who knows, maybe I'll come back and mess with some of that stuff. Let's go ahead and start. Start. 
This world has known war for centuries, but peace is finally preciously near. We deliver the princess to the kingdom across the sea, where a marriage alliance would save us all. Failing this mission would surely plunge us into darker days. Here we go. Look at this little guy. It's very dark in here. All right. Yep. I straight up have a whip. That should be that should be fun. Looks like. All right. So hitting square is a rapid is a seems to be a fast attack. Oops. It broke something back here. And it looks like it looks like triangle is the heavy attack. All right. What happens if I hit circle? Nothing. X is jump. Uh, L1 is a sword. Looks like I have a little katana. Once again, the uh, X is... Yeah, square is a series of fast attacks. Triangle is a stronger thrusting attack. Good to know I have a fallback plan if I... Uh, if the whip doesn't quite work out for me. R1 doesn't do anything right now. L2 looks like it's my gun. I don't really want to waste a uh, bullet right now because I only have 30. It is quite dark here. Destroying pots. All right, cool. Are you friendly or no? Ah, you there, stranger. We've been bored in the night. Ah, they'll they'll want to kidnap our lady, ransom her. Prot oh, shame on you. Get out of my life. I'm gonna whip the crap out of you. <laughs> Who doesn't want a good old Castlevania whip, right? All right, what's going on up here? Save him! Oh, he's dead. He's dead. Everyone's gonna die now. It's okay, I got a gun. Oh, it's a crossbow, right. Oh. Is it working? He's blocking it. Don't really want him doing that if I can avoid it. Oh. Rude. Rude all around. Hello. Got ammo on the ground. Ow. Bad. Hey, buddy. No, no, no. No, no, no. Shame on you. Might have been helpful to have a block available. Granted. Alright. Let's see. Is there a control menu? This probably isn't a part where they necessarily expect me to know how to play yet. But I was just curious. No. Let's see. Oh, there's the, there's the roll. Okay, right trigger is roll. That's what I was looking for. Just wanted to know how to dodge attacks. Hello? A little bit of currency in here in the darkness. Looks like there's a person up there. That must be something I, I want to find my way to. All right. Die, pots. Can I go down there? It, yeah, if you hit down, you go down. All right. The 2D nature seems to be intuitive enough. The unspeakable deep. What is that? Uh, I think there's a giant monster on my ship. Oh, a cthulhu -y. It's old cthulhu -y. He- Oh, no. I'm dead. <laughs> Failing this mission would surely plunge us into darker days. I awoke to the sounds of waves washing on a rock, and I knew I was alive. I must find the princess. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna say the uh, Dark Souls influence has been located. <laughs> We seem to have encountered a, a boss fight you're supposed to lose at. I'm sure that if you really slowly chipped away at its health and kept dodging perfectly, you could probably take him down, just like the monsters at the very beginning of Dark Souls. I mean, not, not Dark... Well, yeah, Dark Souls before you get the weapon. Uh, Bloodborne with the monster before you get the weapon, of course. And uh, Demon Souls was the biggest case of, like, they dump you in this room and you're not supposed to beat this guy. But technically you can, and there's a reward for doing it. All right. Shivering Shore. Friendly? Well, hello, hello there. You're just a fleshy little floatsome washed ashore with the rest of us, huh? You'll want shelter, you want sanctuary, but what is a sanctuary without faith? There's an empty sanctuary up the beach. You can claim it for your creed. Tell me, do you keep the new gods? Yes? Most men follow the three deities. The king, the knight, and the judge. The king lends wisdom to men who lead. The knight protects warriors in combat, and the judge guides those who maintain order. Are you a follower of the three, then? Yes? You're a follower of the three, as I suspected. 
Here is a candelabra of the three, icon of your creed. Yay! Let's just pretend that I'm part of his religion. What could go wrong, right? Right. Alright. Oh, oh! That startled me a little bit. That was loud. What's down here? While blocking, press square to parry. Okay. Huh. Oh, while blocking. Right. I don't have a... I can't block. So, um... Awkward. If this is anything like Dark Souls, though, the classes probably don't mean anything, and it's just your starting equipment, so I can probably just get a shield if I feel like it. Oh, there's your roll command. Bad guys, no! Oh yeah, here's... Here's the hollows you would expect from the early game. Oh, it's a chest. I thought it was a gravestone. Got a sanctuary key. Alright, plus 12 gold? Oh, cool, we have an experience meter and a gold thing. So it is two separate currencies in this case, instead of uh, combined souls. L1 is switch loadouts. Let's take it to your sword. Switch items with the D-pad. Where's my items located? Oh, the candelabra. R1 is use equipped item, as you'd expect from that menu. Let's find out what it does before I try to use it. A golden candelabra, its three branches symbolize the deities of the three, the king, the judge, and the knight. Place the candelabra in a vacant sanctuary to claim it for the three, who uphold integrity, virtue, and order. Sounds like it might be... it actually might be the equivalent of, uh... of lighting bonfires in this game, for all I know. Does, does the whip say anything special? A single-tailed whip of braided leather used on ranches and in stockyards for driving cattle. Although these humble pastoral tools are much more closely associated with idyllic country landscapes than blood-soaked battlefields, they're, surface they're serviceable as weapons in a pinch. Oops. Wrong scrolled the wrong way. Uh, they're serviceable as weapons in a pinch and require considerably less strength than conventional arms such as axes and swords. Yeah, maybe I'll be a dexterity character. Arming sword. A well-balanced sword of tempered steel designed for slashing and thrusting attacks both while mounted and on foot. Can you, can you be mounted in this game, or is that just a reference to its general use? Blades of this type are usually issued to knights and officers upon commission by their ruling authorities. Oh, there we go. Attack stats, dexterity scaling is A, dexterity scaling here is B, but a little bit of strength scaling. So a bullwhip is a pure dexterity item. Interesting. It actually does more damage right now, it looks like. Only by a particle, though, than the current weapon. Platoon crossbow. Uh, there we go. A basic mass-produced crossbow commonly issued to light infantry regiments and soldiers on guard duty. Designed more for large-scale economy than actual effectiveness in battle, its simple components and solid construction nevertheless provide great reliability. Alright, that's cool. That's useful. What's this over here? Oh, it's a, you can toggle being one-handed and two-handed in, in your attacks. So this is two-hand attacks that I can toggle to one-handed so that I could then equip a crossbow in my offhand. So you can use sword and crossbow together if you want to. But for now, I think I'll just stick to my two-handing. There we go. Let's two-hand the sword so that whenever I switch to that, that's what we're doing. And I'll, I'll use the whip and crossbow together. Can I... Actually, I kind of wonder now, can I two-hand the whip? You can. Alright. It's a very angry, strong attack, by the way. Oh, yeah, that's the equipped item one. Inventory, figured that one out already. What? Sanctuary key opens us up. It's a sufficiently ominous door opening animation. It is very dark in here, by the way. Can I make it less dark in here? R1 to claim sanctuary. Maybe that'll do it. There we go. Alright, if I was said I wasn't a man, a man of God, would we not get this? Maybe I'd have a different way of doing it, I don't know. These definitely have the, a slight, like, fog door appearance to it, that's kinda cool. And I can level up here, there's a tree of skill, make an offering. Let's try leveling up. Nope, we need a lot more salt, which were the salt and sink. Hey, we're having- we're, we're at a sanctuary right now, and I have salt. To level up. Salt and Sanctuary. Title. Bam. Tree of Skill. Holy crap. 
Path of Exile. Nice to see you again. Um, so, is there multiple upgrade items? This right now it's the purple blob showing. Whoa, this tree just keeps going. That's slightly terrifying. Okay. This will take a while to look through. Augmented endurance. Is this an endurance tree? Marksman ranking. Bolster dexterity. What's this one over here? Magic? Oh yeah, this is the magic section of the tree. Okay. So we're in full sphere grid territory. What's this thing? What's this little dead end over here? Extra healing potion. Ooh. Bonus Estus, basically. Oh, looks like there's a central little bonus healing potion at the at the central of some of these locations. This one, this area levels you up as a pikeman. Okay. What's up here? Oh, that's a little end point. I'll have to see if I can find what levels up you up as a whip user. I think I might stick to being a whip user. We'll see. I could always start over if I if I felt like I didn't want to stick with where I was. What's aged wisdom? Oh, just one point of wisdom. Oh, there's a poultice pouch right down here. Oh, and the first thing you can, one of the first things you have access to is one. So I'm a, I'm a class one hunter, so that's, I wield class one whips. Class one marksman. Okay. So I think which level you, uh, start at. Can I zoom out? I can. Cool. I think that, uh, your start, your class means a little bit more than Dark Souls normally does, where instead of just being your starting stats and equipment, it also looks like it's going to be your starting location on this giant web. I think you probably you probably start off in different locations based on what class you pick. I could be wrong though. Those starting locations also might just be right here in the middle. They have class one de defender, class one heavy armor. I guess you might just be right in here. All right, so I can make a. There's a poultice pouch over here for a bonus healing item. And there's one down there. I feel like those will make decent priorities. First, I need to actually collect the resource you make you get here though. Make offering. What's that? Nothing to offer. All right. Looks like the uh, candelabra is staying on my on my character right now. We have a red flask. Is that how I level up, or how I heal? Probably. And if I yep, if I rest, we get it back. So there's our Estus flask. We have three right now. Good to know. What's up here? We we saw we saw the chest earlier. All right, this game has a decent feel to it so far. I'm into it. Three red shards and a pouch of salt. Okay, let's learn things. Red shards. A vial of incandescent red, the mending medicine whose formula is a closely guarded secret to the three. Sold in black markets and back alleys by sculptors and merchants of the three. Quaff it to restore some HP. Okay, I thought it might be a shard of healing, but maybe... Like, maybe you... I thought maybe you'd combine some to get more healing, but may, it might just be a different type of healing like a, this this is the this is the one that replenishes itself and this one is the one that doesn't uh pouch of salt a traveler's pouch it contains salt the worth of mankind is the salt of his on his brow for it is the essence of his life matthias 417 let's, let's uh let's go ahead and see if i can use this do i get more salt when i use it you do you get 100 salt just like that all right so ideally, you would save those until you get back to town, basically. And then once you're back in town, you can choose to, uh... And when you get back here, you can you can go burn them all and figure out if you can... Okay, so we, you can't do anything with the shard. I want to check that real quick. But ideally, I wouldn't blow those until I'm ready, until it's going to actually help me level up. I'm only halfway there right now, but I figure out, I'd make sure it does what I think it does. Is this a door I can use? Can't seem to use this door. Maybe, oh, maybe I'll short, open that shortcut up from behind as I progress forward and it'll loop back here. There we go. Can I hit him from here? Oh, I totally can. Whips are awesome. Ow, rude. Oh, that guy has a crossbow. Oop. Let's take care of that. Shame on you. Just like Dark Souls, doing jump attacks, you know. Pouch of salt. Let's try to save those now. What does this do when I use it anywhere? Oh, it does nothing. It seems to do nothing. Let's unequip that. And the salt. Just keep myself having easy access to healing items. I can equip the salt when it's time to, to use it. Can I go down here? There we go. Nope. 
D nothing to pick up over here. Die, crows. No. Oh, no. Three corpses. White hair, black hair, and someone with a jack-o'-lantern for a helmet. Might have been awarded posthumously. Inward. The festering banquet. All right. Atmospheric, that's for sure. Oh my god, the range on this thing is fantastic. I wouldn't be surprised if it's un if it's underpowered compared to something. Oh, the, the bodies are getting up. Oh. Are we talking, like, first hallway of Castlevania Symphony of the Night, where it's infinite enemies, or are we talking about, like... No, I think those are existing zombies getting up. Ow. Gotta watch out for that guy. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. No more crossbows, please. Oh, I see you up there. Ha! Oh, that was a failed dodge on my part. Ow! Oh. Done with your nonsense. Oh, I'm out of stamina. That's not good. But, well, he's out of life, so, you know. Gives me a little perspective. Hello? Alright, this is a nice little recontextualization of the formula. Rotten Walker's ear. Where is the ear? Let's just go to my... Probably go to my general inventory. Oh, there's a bestiary. Where does it show up around here? Sanctuary key? A simple key. It's attached to a leather fob with fine sanctuary inscribed in the common tongue of Ascaria. Rotten Walker's ear. Ear of a rotten walker. One of the island's most decrepit residents. The smell of the ocean... Uh, the smell of the ocean carries on the wind, forever seeping into the fraying flesh. Can be used as a transmutation material or in exchange with a leader. Alright. Let's try to keep... Let's try to keep alive. So let's try... Let's see how much this heals me. There's one flask. It healed me to full. It heals you over time. That's something to keep track of. You're not gonna you're not gonna be instantly recovering. Die. Oh, hello. A bookshelf was here to betray me. Alright. Way over there there's a lever, so if I get in there from behind, I could open that up and have another shortcut through this area. Hey buddy. I can reach you. Not that well, actually. Actually, I can probably just climb up, right? Let's take him out real quick, though. Alright. I'll be interested in seeing how the first boss fight feels when I encounter it. That guy looks tougher. He's got a weapon. He's guarding an item. He might be the Black Knights we're used to seeing in games like this. Is he gonna grab the item? No, he's just wandering around. Ow! Rude. Oh yeah, he seems a little tougher. Oh, that's bad. Is he dead? Finish him. Oh no, he's not finished at the moment. Oh, this is a really slow healing item. Okay. Come on over here, buddy. Yeah. Oh, I got him. Cool. Take that. Is that an item? Nope. What were you guarding? That was... Oh, three more red shards. I just used one of those, and they're, they're a very slow way of healing, and they don't seem very effective. But you seem to get them in larger quantities. Is that an item out there? Sure is. Stone Merchant Bundle of Salt. We'll keep not using those as long as we can. The uh, bundles of salt. Don't want to run out. What's a stone merchant? A small stone figure in the form of a wealthy mer uh, market merchant. Offer the stone merchant to an altar to allow merchants to do business in the sanctuary. Grants gold drop bonus to the sanctuary region. That's handy. So you can add a merchant, which lets you would, would, would actually let you buy and sell items in the area. That's good news. Grasping ring. I, I didn't read this yet. A painted white ring depicting two grasping hands. On the on the continents, a ring such as this would symbolize an unending, des unending desire. Increased salt obtained from slain enemies. Oh. I accidentally grabbed an item that'll... My starting item is one that'll increase my salt gain. So I just kicked a ladder. Is this back at the entrance? Um, Two of the bodies are gone. I find that concerning. Are they coming after me? Well, I opened a shortcut, so I don't see much reason not to just wander right on back. Especially since we have... I might have to fight that one tough guy again, but other than that, we're good. Let's try leveling up. 
you want to level up? What is that? Ascend to level? This is triangle square. What does square do? What does triangle do? I don't know. Neither of them seem to do anything. I'll just say yes. I have the experience. And now we've leveled- oh, we get a black pearl for leveling up. Oh. What? Is that another- was that another player? Like the same way other players show up when you're at bonfires in Dark Souls? That was surreal. Weird moment. Alright. How many salt packets do I have? Bundle of salt? Pouch of salt? Ooh, bundle is bigger. I assume. That pouch was 100, I believe? I don't know how much bundle would be. But to level up again, I probably need a fair bit, so let's probably not... Yeah, I'm gonna hold off on using those. We probably don't have enough yet. Let's visit this tree of skill. That'll be a nice thing to do before we stop for the day. So I can go level up to get daggers or swords, get a point of dexterity, class one light armor. That's probably something I'm gonna want at some point. Willpower and endurance. Okay. I also wanna get towards this uh, pouch over here, ideally. And that would require me to get either swords or daggers along the way. Oh, oh. Oh, this one. Oh, daggers gives you one willpower. Two. And this one gives you class one swords and two hand class great swords. Hunter gave me one class one whips and uh, gave me willpower. Willpower determines your maximum stamina. Oh, interesting. I thought that endurance would do that. Endurance must affect your hit points. Or is that endurance point? Maximum equipment load is endurance. Okay. Okay. Let's start off with a point of dexterity. That seems reasonable. Bolster dexterity. Improves the attack of dexterity scaled weapons. Gilfoy, the wall of steel, may have once cleaved through a hundred men, but Malthus's finesse with the dagger was unparalleled, and it surely found its home between sections of Gilfoy's he heavy plate and the pit of his arm. Malthus 1612. If I focus on dexterity, it might be reasonable to go into assassin and stuff like that to make sure I have, uh... Sorry, what does that say? Willpower determines your maximum stamina? Is that just part of being a hunter? Sorry, I'm getting a little distracted by some weird elements here. It's fine. Uh, but I might as well get, get that dagger skill at some point if I'm gonna go into dexterity, because it'll open up my different options for weapons, I'm sure. Which is probably a reasonable thing to do. But for now... Here I am with one more point to dexterity. Can I make any offerings? The stone merchant. Oh yeah. There we go. Now we have a merchant here. Hello, merchant man. Okay, to browse my wares? Alright. Talk to him. This island is a cold and mysterious place. I miss the bustling markets of Ascaria. The war with Tristan was... quite profitable for me. Those were the days. My belly is fit to quiver just thinking about it. Every day, I'd haggle them all under the table, and every night, I'd put the feast on my table. And the tales I'd watch to my, to my, my wares, I was like a wizard of want. A rusty dagger? No. I'd sell you the Chris of Dying Truths, a magical weapon capable of making its victims tell you anything truthfully to their dying breaths. A wooden spoon? Ha! Huh. You'd be buying Soul Mother Grace's ladle. A generations old scoop that would imbue any liquid to touch it with the magical properties. So long as its owner was pure at heart. So he's he's a crook basically. He would lie he would just upsell people by lying to them about what items do. I don't do that anymore, my appetite is gone. I'll sell you things, but only because it's all I know how to do. Well, go on, buy something, will you? Alright, he's done with that dialogue. What can you buy from him? A red shard costs you 500 gold. Just just one. Wow. So he's really expensive as far as I can tell. Birian fire pot. Clay pot of Birian fire. The, the recipe for a true Birian fire is a closely guarded secret, but the stuff in this pot is probably only a close approximation of it. Okay. Oh, it's probably, an exp oh, it's probably a uh, fire bomb. Pitch fire, arrow, torch, flintlock shot. That's uh, bullets for a gun, right? Bolt, flame arrows, pouch of salt. So you can buy experience with money. Interesting. 
the ball of, uh, the bell of return, a magical bell of faith and, and devotion. It symbolizes the call of gods and spirits. Ring it to return to the sanctuary or shrine you most recently visited. And then an antidote for, for the dessert. Oh, hello. Did I say for, for dessert? <laughs> uh, for curing poison, of course. There's a class zero heavy armor. Better defense against slash fire lightning and weight than I have, but lower for everything else. Definitely a similar list of uh, resistances as you would expect from a game like Bloodborne, for example. Assault Seeker's Ring. Cost 500 again. A metal ring with what appears to be a, a vigilant eye straining through veins and nerves molded into it. When what is lost is easily found, hope is never lost. Reveals the location of its owner's missing the lost salt. Oh, cool. So if you have this ring and put it on, you can help find the corpse that you leave behind when you die. Lantern Charm. Tiny metal lantern with a gold painted cloth tassel. It houses a brightly glowing magical gem. Illuminates surroundings. I'll probably want that. Good old uh, demon souls like glowing shard on your hip type situation. Don't think I really have much to sell yet though. Come back soon. All right. So guys, this has been our little intro to Salt and Sanctuary. You should expect videos every day, if not more frequently than that. Thanks for watching like always guys. I'll see you next time, and be sure to check out my various playthroughs of the Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Blood and Bloodborne games uh, that I've already established on here, if you haven't gotten around to those before. See you guys next time.